we talked a little bit about it at the beginning of the show, Makerspace, and uh, she's going to share a little bit about her Makerspace. Behind me is our Makerspace area. I have three tables set up. We always have a table with coloring, uh, big coloring posters, and always have a table with a puzzle because sometimes high schoolers with the level of stress that they experience, they just need to decompress and relax a little bit and escape reality, as I say, to them. So they color and they puzzle. I also have teachers that come in on their planning period <laughs> and color and play with the puzzle. The other games we have are STEM-related, STEAM-related um, games, and we also have just stuff that's fun. We have Jenga, which is actually the most popular right now. We have chess, we have checkers. We also have snap circuits. We have a 3D doodler pen, which is a 3D, um, like a printer, but in a pen, handheld pen. We have a basket weaving kit. We have um, robotics kit. We have a DNA kit. We have all kinds of different things that they can do that's STEM and STEAM related and also just that escape reality and decompress kind of stuff. I talked to the teachers um, because I was new to high school curriculum, so I spent a lot of time with department heads talking to them about what are your courses teaching and what kind of um, materials would you need as far as the makerspace kits, but also the books in the media center. So I give them catalogs um, and tell them to dog ear the catalogs, circle it all up, and I'll order them what they want that fits their curriculum. I have a table, a large table, collaboration table with a TV on it, flat screen TV and a laptop. And I also bought those little wiggle chairs. The kids love wiggling around, even though they're high schoolers, they love wiggles. But they sit there and they can pass the laptop around to each other and each put their imp input in and it's up on the TV screen so it's easier to see. It's more comfortable than just huddling over one computer. So would you say that compared to the past, this media center has truly become a 21st century library. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And the students are very happy with the media center. I hear it every, even though we are now two years into our, re, our remodel was finished, they still tell me daily how much better it is and how they love coming down and they love working and they can collaborate with each other and they can get on the computers and do what they need to do. And it's just, it's blossomed. It's, it's more than that blossomed, it's exploded. <laughs> so we have kids coming into the media center, but, and they're doing a lot of things. I saw um, coloring, um, I saw putting a puzzle together, um, and then uh, the STEM and STEAM and the building and so on and so forth. Um, speak to how that helps academics to have them coming in and playing games. Well. Everybody needs to realize that the kids are under a lot of pressure. They are having to be successful in the classroom. They are having to be successful, especially at the high school level, with all their IB pieces, the AP pieces, all the testing that happens with all of that. And at some point, there has to be a space where they can go to, to, as she said, decompress. It's like a de-stressor. It allows them to breathe and calm down. And this in itself helps behaviors because the kids don't have to act out. They don't have to get upset. They just, they go to the media center and they use their hands and they create or they just do. And nobody's putting any pressure on them and they, they can calm down and focus. It helps them focus better on what they have to do next. Watch Digital Learning Monday and Friday at 6.30 and Saturday and Sunday at 12.30 on WPDS TV 14, Pinellas County Schools Television.